Attention on deck.
He's on a five, right? He's on a five, right? Well, happy holidays to all of you, and thank you very much for hosting us here and this very fine lunch. Nancy and I, uh, it's been quite a while since we've had the opportunity to meet here with any of you. I'd like to ask a question first. Uh, since I discovered something on a recent visit with some of you, uh, any of you CBs uh, served at uh, Rancho del Cielo? No, last time I was here, there were several that had been transferred from there. There is a, there is a detachment of CBs that are assigned to the, our, that's our ranch in California. And uh, you who are CBs might be interested to know that one of your uniforms is going to be displayed in the presidential library when it is built. Because uh, right. uh, the detachment out there gave me one of those uniforms and now that there's gonna be a presidential library, I thought it ought to be seen by a lot of people instead of just in my closet. <laughs> well, anyway, I just want to tell you that Nancy and I, there's no way I think to really explain to you what Camp David, the good ship Camp David, means uh, to someone who lives in the White House. Security, of course, there are a great many restrictions that you don't find yourself going, even going out and walking in the lawn, but to be able to come up here and all, not only the courtesies, but all of the things that you combine to do to make it so pleasant and restful and so forth. And every Christmas, I think the most beautiful Christmas tree that we have is the one that's decorated here over at Aspen. And all of these things that you do, and we're most grateful to you. I think that uh, without Camp David, uh, there'd be a sort of element of jail <laughs> to holding the job that, that we hold. So I just want you to know how much we appreciate it. But I'm not going to want to make a speech here because I just thought there must have been times when you've been performing your duties when you said, if I had a chance, I'd like to ask him. And uh, right now, why don't you? <laughs> Anyone have a question? Yes? What is my favorite? Football team, sir. Oh, well, you know, <clears throat> I have to, um, in the job I'm in, I'm supposed to be nonpartisan. <laughs> uh, now, of course, if it should turn out to be the Rams, uh, I'd, I wouldn't hide a smile <laughs> on my face. <laughs> but. Uh, Incidentally, there, this isn't anything that you ask, but I have to tell you, in the modern times, in this world of terrorism and so forth, I think one of the great things we've missed in our eight years here is not going to the Army-Navy game and seeing one half the game on the Navy side and the other half on the Army side, which was traditional with presidents. But uh, you can't ask any more 75,000 people to go through a magnetometer <laughs> in order to see a football game, so we can't go to a game like that. Somebody else? Yeah. Still, sir. I, uh, there's rumors saying that uh, the president likes the leaves <laughs> out around Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> then there's rumors saying that uh, we should sweep the leaves. I have wondered what you really thought about the fact that. <laughs> 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 
You mean the fallen leaves? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm willing to let them lay there. <laughs> it's just a part of nature. <laughs> Somebody else? What kind of man would I like to be remembered as? Well, someone who did the best he could. And uh, uh, I guess that I always tried to be fair. And I guess that'd do it. Uh, we've, uh, I'm proud of one thing that we've accomplished. Maybe you're, you're all so young. Eight years ago, I had a very definite feeling that this country was hungering for a spiritual revival, that there seemed to be a lapse of a great many moral principles, but also a lapse of that feeling that we should have about our country. And uh, one of my goals was to set out to see if we couldn't change that, and we have. Now, you're going to think that I'm just saying this because I'm here, but I've said this all over the country. One of the things I'm most proud of in all that has happened is in these eight years are the young men and women who are wearing the uniform of the military services of our country. You're a special breed. General, well, General George Marshall at World War II, someone asked him if we had any secret weapon, and he said yes. And they said, what is it? He said, the best damn kids in the world. I think if General Marshall was alive today, he'd still find that you were the best damn kids in the world. Sergeant Evans, sir, I was wondering after you finish your administration, if you're going to get involved with the movie industry at all. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think if they made a rerun re of the Knut Rockne pictures, Somebody else would play the Gipper, and I'd have to play Rockney. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think so. I, I loved that profession. I enjoyed it very much. In fact, I know that one of the fellows at our table has had a little experience uh, in that field. But um, I have a feeling that it would look like cashing in on the job that I've now had, and I don't think that'd be right. But besides, I got a lot of other, th other things I want to do. I want to get out on the mashed potato circuit and make some speeches and plead for some things that we didn't get done while I was here. The Congress wouldn't uh, adhere to and see if I can't arouse the citizenry to get some things done, like as I mentioned at the table there. Uh, line item veto, a balanced budget amendment, and uh, also see if I couldn't cure that congressional habit of thinking that the only place you can cut spending is in the military. Uh, I don't believe in that. And that was another thing that we corrected. Do you know that when we took office, on any given day, fully half the military aircraft could not fly for lack of spare parts? And fully half the naval vessels couldn't leave port for that or for lack of crew? Well, that isn't true anymore. So I'm going to keep speaking up on that side also. So I think also, having read the press about our administration, I think I've got to write a book. Well, somebody ought to set things straight. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks, Cole Pilar. What position did you plan for Bull, sir? Right guard. <laughs> yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I played that in high school and then uh, in, in college. And in those days, you played both ways, defense and offense, and I still think that's best. I think it's got to be more fun that way. But uh, in college, I averaged all but three minutes of every game for three years and enjoyed every minute of it. Anyone else? There was one game I didn't enjoy. We were playing U Millican University. They had a fellow who later became a member of the Chicago Bears team and for eight years was all pro tackle 
in the National League. And I played right opposite him in the line. He outweighed me 100 pounds. <laughs> George Musso. The only plays I wanted the quarterback to call were those in which when we had the ball, I did not charge. I went out of the line and ran in the <laughs> interference. <laughs> Anyone else? I know I'm keeping you. You're too long. What? Yes. Rancho del Cielo, ranch in the sky. It's up in the Santa Ynez Mountains, and right on the, the top, the crest of those mountains. So that uh, I've told already it's someone else that my horseback riding up there, we can look to one side and see all the Channel Islands out there in the Pacific, and the other side see the whole Santa Ynez Valley spread out. It's beautiful. Sir, Betty Austin, there's been rumors that uh, they would like to make a movie about your life after you leave office. Would you condone that? Who's going to play the part? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard any of those rumors. And, uh, uh, well, if they ever did it, I'd sure want to look over the shoulder of the fellow that writes the script. <laughs> you know, I could very easily turn out to be the villain in the picture. If, <laughs> Anyone? One more? Yes, Court McKay, sir. What was your favorite visit of yours, sir? Favorite visit? Yes, sir. I don't know that we could pick one out that was there always. We look forward to it all the time. As a matter of fact, a former president's wife once said to Nancy before we got here that if it wasn't for Camp David, you'd get stir crazy. And, uh, but no, it's just always a great pleasure to come up here. all make it very pleasant. But it was one more hand, and then I think I have to go. I was in fear of rumors that you used to try and spot the Marines while you're out on your horse rides. That what? If you could spot the Marines while you're out on your horse rides, I was wondering if you ever did catch any of the South Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes tease the Secret Service people that are riding with me that I'll bet it's all a snare and a delusion that there aren't any out there. <laughs> They swear up and down you are, that you are out there. But no, I know, and I, I'm most grateful, not only to them, but to all of you who take that on. It's, I, I have reason to know the value of security now. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's just great to, to know you're there and to be able to ride outside the park. and. Uh, Trail. That's the one difference, however, that riding this trail up here in the Catoctin National Forest and riding on the ranch. Every little ways on the ranch, there's a different view, and you're seeing something new. But riding here through the forest, it wouldn't matter if you rode a different trail. They all look alike, two walls of green on either side of <laughs> you and a trail ahead. But it's pleasant. We've, we've really enjoyed it. Well, thank you all, and they tell me I've stayed here too long, so. But uh, again, we feel very indebted to you, and this has been and will continue to be one of the happy memories, most happy memories of our eight years as Camp David. I think of all the things, we'll miss this most. Thank you. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs>